passed away. We wanted men. Morning, Jason. Morning. How are you today? How are you? I, I'm good. I'm a little tired. Well, what is that? I don't know. Let's uh, clear what? that out. Um, dude, I'm still this weekend, last weekend, I'm still, it's still catching up to me like a week later. I was listening to the deep dive and I like the part where you were going all Danny Ocean from Ocean's Eleven talking about how you would steal the Kenner sign. You would back the truck up. You would take a bolt cutter. You would cut the one bolt that holds the sign down. You put the sign in the back of the truck and you would drive off and hope no cameras caught you. But if cameras <laughs> did catch you and you got arrested, what people don't realize is that three days before you actually stole the real sign and replaced it with a fake one, put the real sign on the back of a van and sent it home. So you spend a night in jail. Mandy comes, bails you, bails you out. You go home. And you never return to the state of the floor of Ohio, Florida. I don't know why I said that. And then, you know, you've got your Kenner sign in your collection. Right. That was, that was my favorite part. I was listening to it. I'm, I had this whole like plot line develop in my head. And well, what's funny about that, that Kenner sign, it is, it's, it's all bolted in. And then you look down at the bottom of the thing and, and it's one bolt holding the whole sign in. So if you really wanted to steal it, you'd have to steal the whole thing. But, if you go down the street to the crosswalk, somebody's already stole that sign because it's just was in the air. Um, <laughs> but you've heard stories. You talk to people that have them. and Oh, yeah, we went and it was on the ground while they were replacing it. And they just <laughs> said, sure, take it. Oh, is that how that happens? Yeah, I don't know if like, like street signs get retired and then the, the city will sell it off or something. I don't know. No. It but, and off. it's like. Yeah, it just fell off. And it's like 12 feet in the air. So I don't know if you saw the the picture of the Empire yeah. guys yeah. <laughs> putting the sticker on. The wind blew it in my backyard. So I just threw it up on my wall. Right. I don't know. How's your uh, week been? Good. Uneventful, which is always good. Right. Um, the uh, Tuscan Raider and the, um, what is it? The Death Star droid became available again on Walmart. So I ordered them and they came in good condition. Um, unlike the first time when they were crushed. So I just returned the crushed ones and kept the new ones. Nice. Yeah. Did, uh, did, were you, because we haven't talked since the uh, retro or this droids fat stuff came out. Did you yeah. pick those up? I did pre-order them. I ordered them from Entertainment Earth because they usually get them first before Hasbro. I, it's yeah. free shipping. That's nice. But I yeah, do have that, a, go ahead. No, uh, it was what? Boba Fett, Mandalorian, Armor, Bo Katan, Death Trooper, and Ahsoka. That's the what about the wave. No, no, I'm talking about the droids, like the blue fett. Oh, yes, that one. Yeah. I gotta take my lumps for that one because I thought they weren't gonna go full droids line and they did. <laughs> it so, was which is awesome. And they got the coin and everything. Right. So I was talking to people um in Cincinnati and they were kind of saying how they thought that it would that coin would diminish the value of the other stuff. And I'm like, the retro collection never touched the value of anything else. So no. I don't think it'll do it. No. And, and there's usually some sort of updated copyright on those coins. Yeah. The so, back's totally different. Yeah. So, I mean, it might be nice to have them both together, but I don't think it's going to diminish the value of the vintage stuff. Right. I mean, the, like you were saying, the vintage collection stuff, they're, they're trying to redo the 96. And it's not bringing the prices down of those original figures. Yeah, what's uh, what I thought I was just kind of rearranging stuff yesterday or whatever. You know, you move something and you, you remember. Uh, but I have one of the rocket firing fets from the '90s or like late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, the vintage collection one. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah late 2000s. That was uh, they made to look like the vintage line, but it's got a rocket firing 
And those things are going for like two, three hundred bucks right now. Yeah, I didn't cards. get one. I'm kicking myself. I could have had one. It was like eighty bucks, right? And yeah, I never picked one up. So I need one of those. I only have the proto Boba Fett, the the white one. Okay. Yeah, this. Yeah, I picked this one up uh, a few years ago. Somebody had uh, gone to Toy Lana and they had a carded one, and they were asking like hundred and fifty bucks for. Actually, it was graded. And I think it was a 90 and they were asking like, asking like 150 bucks because it was a 90. And then I was like, wait a minute. I saw one of those on one of the Facebook groups for like 20 bucks a couple of days ago. So I hunted it down and was able to pick it up for 20 bucks. You got a steal there, sir. I sure did. I was pretty excited about that one. But yeah, and it's, it's one of those things where you're looking at it going, do I really want this for if it's worth $200? You know, it, it, but it's like, no, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I do have a complaint about the Hasbro Pulse thing because I did order the Ahsoka and Maul, the Clone Wars, yep. last season of Clone Wars. Yeah. I've seen them in Walmart and I didn't pick them up because I'm like, I got it from Hasbro Pulse and the cards were jacked up. So I, I just left them and uh, I got my Ahsoka. It's the cards are great. Got no complaints yep. about that. But I keep getting emails about them all going. It's delayed. It's delayed. It's delayed. I'm like, it's showing up in Walmart and you guys are Hasbro what's going on yeah i i can't i have to echo that because uh when i was up in new york i could have got that full wave and canceled everything from the pre-orders and i'm still getting for not just the vintage stuff of black series these delays and but you hear about like their ships off the coast that are just drifting they can't get enough people to unpack the boats so that's why right we're not getting them but at the same time you know, I would imagine there's a higher markup to sell it on Hasbro Pulse than it is to give it to Target, who's going to buy it from you and then sell the price up even more. You know, so why not just give your customers, your Hasbro Pulse customers first dibs because you're making more more money off of that. Right. Serve yourself before you serve Target and Walmart. I don't know. I don't know either. But it's just annoying. It is what it is. I'm My wife had smart to... enough. I'm not oh. smart enough to understand that. <laughs> My wife had the same thing with um, with Barbie and, and Mattel because they did the uh, they they're doing like a Day of the Dead Barbie every year, and this this year it was a Ken and a Barbie, and she got ordered them off of Mattel, got the Ken, and it keeps getting the email that hey the Barbie's delayed, Barbie's delayed, and these are hard to come by. And then she went to Walmart or Walmart.com and ordered it, and it was shipped even better than Mattel's because it yeah. came it comes in a shipper box. All Mattel did was slap a label on it and ship it and Mattel, like, I mean, Walmart actually took the, you know, took the label, took the uh, shipper box, put it in another box with a bunch of, ta- with a bunch of packing material and then shipped it like that. So it, you know, I was in Walmart actually impressed me with that one. I wish they would do that with the vintage collection, Yeah. put it in another box and then ship the box. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, there was in some positive news. Um, one of the guys from one of the major, investment capital business banks jp morgan or something like that said he doesn't even think there's going to be a supply chain issue next this year next time this Good. time next year excuse me i knew so what you meant. yeah so hopefully well, i don't know if the, the listeners do but hopefully next year everything will be kind of smoothened out and we'll be uh back to normal i sure hope so man because it's it's getting ridiculous when you you know you're, you're trying to buy something from the store or trying to buy you know wood or Something you're used to going by and it's out or you're paying a buttload of money for it. Yeah, prices of wood are going up. Yeah. Again. Jesus. But that should all come down. Yeah. What, uh, anything else exciting going on in the news? Um, well, I was thinking last night about Obi-Wan Kenobi, the, the new show that's rumored to be released on May 4th and trying to think of where we last saw Obi-Wan and to where we saw him again in episode four between those two the two movies. And one thing that did come to mind at the end of episode three, Obi-Wan doesn't know that Vader is Anakin. Right. So I guess we need to learn that in the show. So come episode four, he knows that information and he can be too hurt to tell Luke the truth and has to tell him in a, in a point of view of what happened. Um, I heard a rumor that they're actually going to, there's going to be a big battle between Luke, uh, Luke uh, Vader, and Obi Wan, and at that moment, Obi Wan will realize what happened, and it's supposed to be oh. So that and I would be- imagine that Obi Wan has yeah, I, that's going to be awesome. But um, 
I would imagine that Obi Wan has to tell Uncle Owen too, because Uncle Owen kind of knows the path that Anakin took. Probably. So I'm looking forward to seeing all that stuff. Dude, I'm look all the, the next year is going to be awesome for Star Wars content going into. Uh, actually, it starts with in December 29th going yep. into uh, 22. So it's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm looking. I really. <coughs> I'm hoping Ahsoka gets released in 22, but I don't know. I know they're shooting uh, Mandalorian season three right now or season yeah, four or whatever sh- the hell it's going to end up being. I don't want I hate putting timely information in the podcast because it could soon become dated. But then there's that special effects makeup crew. The special effects union is potentially going on strike, which would shut down the Mandalorian from shooting if that were to go through on October 18th. Okay. Is that that whole thing where they're trying to get better hours and stuff? Is that folded into everything? I would imagine so. I'm not, I've got friends and I could ask them if, if we want a detailed explanation of things, but um, yeah, it's probably something like that. Okay. And I don't know if you guys, I don't even know all about it, but I've just, I've read a little bit that basically all the, the support teams or whatever are trying to get better hours because they're tired of working like 12 to 18 hour days and, you know, going home at midnight and having to be back at six in the morning. So they're trying yeah. to get some more fair hours and fair treatment and better pay and stuff. Uh, so that's, that's the strike we're talking about. Yeah. Those special effects, visual effects, those guys usually get the shaft when it comes to movie making. I know like the guys that do the visual effects, I mean, they'll bid for work and then um, so they may bid like 60 hours of work, for example, I'm just going to throw that number out there. And they don't even bid for that. They just bid for shots. You got 60 shots. Well, you got to complete the shots. Well, then the reason why most of these companies go out of business is they deliver the 60 shot, shots and then they go, the producers will come back and say, we want to make more changes. And and the contract stated for those 60 shots, not like further changes, you know? Mm-hmm. So they have to keep working and working longer than anticipated because it's all in the contract. You got to deliver the 60 shots. It doesn't matter if it takes you three days or three years, you got to deliver those shots. Wow. And that's the reason why a lot of those visual effects companies go, go out of business because they just can't afford to, to produce visual, visual effects like that. Right. At least that's my understanding of it. If that's the way it does it, that's really crappy. That needs to change in my right. opinion. Unless you're the industrial light and magics of the world, like any of those smaller shops, they, they can get eaten up real quick. Right. That sucks. Yeah. But yeah, Boba Fett, <laughs> 29th of December. Can't wait. Yes. It should be. Uh, God. Is that a six episode series? I think it's Hawkeye six or, is six. It's either six or eight. I don't know. I'd, I'd rather them say, you know, put a good series, like a six episode series out than stretch it to eight or ten. And then you're you've got wasted episodes. There's also another rumor that Book of um, the Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian season three will end with season four, mm-hmm. and it will just continue on as a different character. So it might be, I don't know, the Bo Katan show or something like that. After that, it would be a continuation of season four. It's just not focused around the Mandalorian anymore. Okay, I, I'd be fine with that as long as they do it right. Yeah, I don't think Disney wants to let go of this era of Star Wars because it seems to be resonating with people. Right. In a way, the sequel trilogy didn't. Yeah. But they're uh, not going to throw away that golden goose. No, they're not. Uh, yeah. You get anything fun this week other than toys? Or... No. No. <laughs> I got a, uh, my wife got me because uh, it was our anniversary this week, actually. Well, yeah, I already said about the thing, but uh, the, the, oh, crap, hold on. I got to get my train of thought. First, she got me like this Bill and Ted poster that's from yeah. Face to Music. That's a limited edition poster. It's printed on like really high quality. Like it's an art poster. So okay. she picked that up for me. I knew it was, I kind of, I'd seen it on Macari and I said, if it ever gets under $50, buy it. And she waited like two or three months and finally the guy broke down and she got it. And she surprised it me with it. Like a screen print? Kind of like a screen print. It's uh, basically Bill and Ted and their daughters at the uh, the ending scene where they're at the, on the bridge where everything's opened up and you're starting to see world, the world collapse. It's that poster. And it's done, it's done really awesome. It's really dark, but it's, it's got a lot of crap going on in it. Uh, but uh, it's pretty badass. 
Yeah, I've cool. got it hanging right there so I can see it. <laughs> um, right there, but audience. Then, Can't you right see it? Right there. Right there on my right hand shoulder where nobody could see it but me. Uh, and basically, what I, I covered up my uh, power box, the breaker box with it. So if I ever need to, buy, if people have come and try to find my breaker box. I'm oh, like, yeah. Behind a poster. It's a good way to dis- disguise it. Yeah. So it hides it. But that uh, thing I was griping about a few weeks ago, the uh, thing I got the from Canada finally showed up and it, it showed up fine. But yeah, it was a uh, pop. It was, uh, here we go. Funko pop. <laughs> oh, shit. But it was a it was a prototype uh, Gremlin Gizmo Funko pop. So my wife collects gizmos and she collects the Funko pops because it's gizmo. And somebody had a uh, prototype one for for dirt cheap. So I when I picked I picked that up, and it took a month or two to get here. Yeah, yeah. And yet again, dumbass puts my address on one side and his address on the other side of the box. And you know that's you think they'd scan it and realize that it needed to stay in Atlanta instead of going back to Chicago. And so, oh, really? Yeah. That's what happened. That's what happened. It's the second time that's happened. Where there's they, a they for- format, people. <laughs> it is 101 that you learn this in kindergarten how to address a label or an right. envelope he did put to and from on it but it was just when i got it i was like oh my god That's thankfully it, it made it it was a little crushed but nothing happened at a pop because he put you know one layer of bubble tape over it but other than that it was fine the Good. wife was excited she put it with her other funko pops and yeah david's um up in cincinnati david sean's daughter she's getting in the funko pops and i'm just like oh you poor poor boy yeah again that's another data point it's the younger generation that likes the funkos that's what they collect they don't want the life size six inch or realistic looking six inch um action figures right and i I showed her my wall of funko when we were really deep into it she was just like Oh, I was like, yeah, I, I, I took the big dive and I told her, I said, if you really want to, you know, the commons are fun to hunt, but you need to really try to get the uh, special edition ones. And the ones that are hard to, the, you know, the ones that are really hard to hunt down, but yeah, that's my week. Speaking of uh, Funko, yes. Yak Face is uh, rumored that there's a Wookiee holiday edition black series figure. So tired of those. But Hasbro's chasing that Funko money. That's what that's what Funko does. There's yeah. there's obviously a market. It's just I guess Funko's for the younger generation and the Black Series is for the the generations like us. And I mean that's that's my assumption right now. Yeah. As to what the audience is for these figures, but I don't know if the adults really want this stuff, the, the repacks. Dude, maybe they'll maybe a little kid will want that. Wookie, you know, Chewbacca with the uh, Santa hat on. I don't know. I saw kind of a picture of it and I'm like, as oh, soon as you? I saw that. Was it was real? Like, I don't know. I don't think it's real. I think it was a Photoshop job. But, you know, they did the Stormtroopers and as cheesy as those were, they were collectible. People wanted them. Yeah, we'll see what the Wookie looks like before I make past judgment because I did like I did like the Range Trooper just like Santa Claus. I thought that was cute. The, the Stormtroopers and the funky neon green just didn't work for me and I passed those up. Gotcha. And I also I, you like know, the holidays, so yeah, sucker for that. They look, they were different, but do you really want to spend twenty dollars on them? I mean, that's where I, with my money, it's always I got. I've learned a long time ago. It's like my stepmom told me when I was started working. You got to figure out. Okay, this thing cost you sixty bucks. It you work six hours for that, or Is whatever you know. So, do I really want to buy something? You know, where do I want to spend my twenty dollars? I'd rather buy other crap. Oh, there was a couple other things I wanted to bring up. Did you see that report on Jedi, Jedi Temple Archives about GTP toys, the creators of Space Walls? No. So there's a, a company who created Space Walls. They're like walls that go on the back oh. of your action figures. Yeah, yeah, I did see that one. And they got the official license from Disney to make LED backdrops. But then things changed when they got the official license and it resulted in the company going bankrupt. And I thought that was a good primer or a good example of what might happen for, or what's going on with Hasbro. Uh So the things that happened here, let me go off. And again, you can read the full article on Jedi temple archives, 
Pre-orders were less than anticipated. Disney made them use a Disney-approved factory. And the factory closed a few times because of COVID. Jeez. And according to the article, the product wasn't as good as the original factory. The, what, the, the Disney-approved factory wasn't delivering a product as good as their original factory. So Disney also prevented them from making their original space walls or mentioning them at all, which were highly successful. And as a result, because of the pre-orders being less than anticipated, they closed down. They went for bankruptcy. And they weren't wow. able to, they're going to try to fulfill those orders, but they've lost the license. And a couple of things, you know, are, are really, I mean, it makes, it's no surprise, but Disney has all the power. Right. When you want to work with Disney, they have, they control everything. Disney forces companies to use their own factories, which seems to have a quality issue like GD, GTP toys are saying, which explains why this new, for example, the Tuscan Raider, you, you move his right arm or something like that, it snaps off. Wow. Yeah. And people are like, you need to boil his arm before you, you move it to loosen it. It's like, you don't, you shouldn't have to boil an arm. No, you shouldn't. To move no. it. Um, Disney doesn't care about the well-being of their licensors. They don't see having a strong licensing community being a priority for them. Uh -huh. All they care about is the money. So, you know, if they go out of business, so what? We got their money. That and sucks. I, I just, I see, I, I just see the problem here. That, I mean, there's a reason why Hasbro is focused on the repaints and repacks, and it has to be because Disney has all the power and they're controlling what they can make and how much they, the profit they make and how much profit Disney makes. The only thing that really stands out and, and has me scratching my head are the new retro collection stuff because all that stuff is brand new. I mean, the last mm. two waves, is, there's no repacks. Oh, we do have to talk about the retro fets, but we get that, that the Mandalorian stuff. But uh, so, yeah, I don't, why wouldn't, I mean, here, here's the thing. Why don't you just fly in under the radar and make your own version of something, you know, and, and instead of trying to link up with Disney, you know, because it seemed like they had a pretty good thing going. If you just change that one thing and then it's not, it's Star Walls, not Star Wars Walls. Space Walls. Space Walls. I would imagine it's to to grow and scale up. You know, if you want to expand your business, if you want to be in the Star Wars business and you want to do it right and deliver a high quality product, you know, you would assume you need the license. So Disney doesn't sue you and shut you down. Right. But it just didn't go that way. Also, there was, um, they also mentioned they were going to do the Tenity 4 space walls. And that got slapped down by by Disney because they assume Hasbro's got the rights to make that. And I mean, they made that in the vintage collection line. Yeah. So it's just an interesting story. And, and, and it kind of illuminates the, the dark secrets that go on behind the scenes, hidden by behind contracts, you know, the things that we don't know. And we can just kind of tell something's up. There's a reason why Hasbro's doing all these repaints, repaints and repacks. And we just don't know what it is yet. Mm-hmm. It'll come out one day, I'm sure. I'm sure, but I mean that—that's your primer. That those are probably some of the reasons why. Yeah, no, it. But why is Disney? I guess it's Lucasfilm too, because, you know, like we've always said, the What If series comes out, and there's the Iron Man from the What If series is out a week later. I mean, it's yeah. on the shelf. It's not like it's, you know, oh, we're gonna make it. It's on the shelf the week after the show right. is released. Right. I don't know. I would assume the license for Star Wars action figures is a lot higher than um, Marvel or even the Ninja Turtles. I mean, the Ninja Turtle line right now is phenomenal. They got these action figures that look just like the 90s cartoon. They're just incredibly right. sculpted. The paint apps are spot on. They look beautiful. But the, uh, the crown jewel of the action figure business, Star Wars, is just swept under the rug and treated like the the stepchild nobody wants do you think it's uh you know going back to the original contract with kenner how uh george lucas kind of got you know raked over the coals with that contract and when he had the opportunity to to give it to hasbro he did and is still doing it 20 years later well the, the contracts expire okay so at some point was it 2020 or 2019, one of those two years, the contract expired, and then there was a press release to say, hey, we're continuing this relationship, but there was no indication as to when that contract expires again. So that started up, 
again at that time and we're getting a lot of repaints and repacks gotcha or maybe didn't we talk about maybe they, that that's why they didn't they were still getting the repacks and stuff as they were waiting for the license that's and then that's, they couldn't wrap up yes. ramp up the stuff yeah that's another possibility because it can take 18 months to start up figures again to, gotcha. to produce a figure can take up to 18 months. Right. But then Plus we're getting... The, go ahead. The, co the cost to make those aluminum molds that they uh, heat inject the plastic into can cost as much as a car. I mean, they were Some talking, of them are as much as a house, aren't they? Well, like the sail barge was probably about $500,000 to make all the molds for that. Wow. So there is, a, uh, there is an investment into that. Gotcha. But did you, uh, well, I guess you saw all the retro stuff from the Mandalorian that they were releasing. Yeah. Yeah. I ordered it. Oh, did you? <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about ordering that fat and maybe the Bo Katan, but I have an extra fat coming. Okay. And an extra Mando. Gotcha. Does it, are they two packed, two per pack? Those are two. Yeah. Two per I'm case. Getting a full case. So I'll get one of everyone, but Mando and Boba Fett. Those are the only ones that are extra packed. Gotcha. Still wanted them to do a Cobb Vant, but. They didn't. People were investigating the the photos released of Boba Fett, and they're like, "Is this is this a rocket firing Boba Fett?" P I've heard that. It's not officially yet, though, is it? No, they haven't. I they've probably no I haven't it. seen anything. They're probably saving it this week. Is the Hasbro convention online thing? Yeah, what is it called? Doing, yeah, the Tuesday Mando Tuesdays or something or. No, they're doing a. It's like a Hascon. Oh, okay. But aren't they also doing something where they're releasing stuff on either Monday or Tuesday for the next month? PulseCon. Pulse but Con. yeah, there's some sort of every week they're doing something up to the release of the Book of Boba. Which, you know, I hate to complain because <laughs> I'm not really a complainer, but I do miss the days where you would have a big release day and you would go to the store and all the product would be out. We the, all the miss that day, man. Midnight, midnight Madness and force fridays like it's all gone do you think it's a covid thing or they just don't that's easier to order stuff online i don't know that's a good question i'm trying to, there there was a force friday for revenge of the uh, um rise of skywalker wasn't there something like that yeah because that was when they had the, the white box editions right right so that was the last one, and that was pre-COVID. Yeah, so maybe COVID did do stuff. I don't know. So yeah, it just I don't know. I it here in Georgia, it's totally different. Uh, you know, I'm I don't know. I know it's it, it's just weird because you know I'm going to the Braves game tonight, and I'm going to you know there's a con next weekend that we're going to, and there, we were just at a big convention you know last weekend, and it just I mean it's there, and people are are being safe, but. I don't know. I, it, I don't know how to. I know other parts of the country treat it a lot differently than we do. Than we do. Yeah, it's kind of funny when you go from state to state how different they treat COVID. Right. I don't and, want to get and, into the politics of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to either. But it is weird. You do get, you know, it's just different. And and to me, my, in my mind, it's like let's go. And I know a lot of people are like, wait a minute, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. So, well, the good Anywho, news is, huh? is, is it's trending down still. Right. New cases. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means Delta is getting weaker or people, more people are getting vaccinated or whatever the case may be. It's, it's trending down, which is good news. Right. And hopefully it stays that way and we don't get a new variant. I really hope so. Cause I'm ready. Let's uh, start moving forward. But anyway, uh, and then CEO of Hasbro passed away. He had prostate yes. cancer, Brian Goldner. So I don't, I didn't like to hear that. And make sure you get your cancer screenings early. Right. Definitely. I don't know what, I don't know what his case was, but that's just a PSA. Yeah. The last, Definitely. Piece, last piece of news I have, and then I'll, I'll shut up and let you talk <laughs> for a while. Um, AFA has been acquired by diamond comics distributors. Um, this is something I want to get into. But yeah, yeah, this keep is going. Uh, Diamond Comic Distributors is primarily a comic book novel merchandise di distributor, but they also own Hawks, Hakes, excuse me, Hakes Auction. 
Um, I want to keep AFA in Atlanta. So hopefully that stays that way because we do get a lot of people that pass through here and we can meet collectors when they swing by Narayan's place. <laughs> <laughs> They're not coming over here. They're going to Narayan. So if Narayan comes, uh, invites us over and I'm able to go, I'll, I'll go. But I'm not, I'm still learning a lot about the, the collecting community and there's things that I'm not sure about. And I'm like, how, how can owning Hakes and AFA hurt the community? And the only thing I can really see is, and I don't know if this is going to hurt the community. It's just, I don't know. They might buy a couple boxes of Black Series and, and pull the things out and, and put them in AFA graded cases and then sell them at Hakes. And so they're making more money than they would before. But I don't, I don't know if that's the only way it might hurt the community. Here, here's, here's my take on it and are what, where my mind is going with it. I mean, if they want to own, if they want to have a monopoly, that's all fine and dandy, but that's they need problem. to uh, watch, you know, if they, if all of a sudden Hank starts having a lot of 90 or 85, 90s, 90, you know, or hell, I've never seen a 95, but you know, stuff that's graded really high show up in their auctions. It's going to be a dead giveaway as to, Oh, that's oh. what's going on. So more of the vintage stuff, right? More, you know, you got stuff that's showing up that is um, shouldn't it be graded high, and all of a sudden there's a lot of stuff that's graded high. So to to inflate the prices of the auction, that's what I'm concerned about because uh, I know there's been time. You know, uh, I've heard of certain people stepping away from things because conflict of interest, and I see that becoming a conflict of interest as far as uh, yeah. them staying in Atlanta. Right now, that's their plan is they're going to stay in Atlanta. I think it'd be silly for them to, to move it because that's where, you know, they've got a good operation going over there. And I what's agree. the point, you know, then you'd have to start all over again if you moved it. Because I know people that work there and they're not going to move, you, you know, to them, it's 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 a career, but it's a job, too. So why why am I going to move if they move the whole operation to another state? But if they start grading 90 items. And people are like, that's not a 90. That's going to affect the AFA brand. It can. So it's in their best interest not to do that. Right. I mean, it it goes both ways. Uh, I mean, they could just, yeah, you don't want, it it could be a conflict of interest, I guess, is what I, like I said, but you, yeah, you don't, yeah, like you just said, you don't want them inflating prices. So maybe it'll be, you know, keep things, keep things fair. I don't know. Uh, Or maybe they're, you know, it would just be odd. It would look bad if all of a sudden Hank starts having some really high end stuff show up in their auction, yeah. high graded auction. Right. And so that, go ahead. No, I just, at this point in, in the world in 2021, I just don't see a lot of 90s existing that are not graded already. Yeah. So I think all those high grades should be graded at this point. I mean, there might be one or two pieces, but. For the most part, I would imagine that if you have a really good item, you'd want to keep it secure and you would have it graded already. Right. And then you get into the, you know, buying a graded versus getting it graded. And I don't know. At this point, I'm almost like I'd rather go get a nice acrylic case versus getting something graded. Just unless you want to archive it, you know, put the UV protection on the case. Got to look something up real quick. There was um, Kraft, Kraft Foods bought Canterbury eggs. Uh-huh. Um, and everybody was, people in, in the Great Britain were upset because they're like, this U.S. company is buying this company and um, they're going to take it out of here. And Kraft was like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Everything's going to stay here. And so that, that went that way for a while. But then over time, a couple years later, they decided to move everything, and I don't think it's there anymore. I think they closed it down, and it's not as good. Huh. Well, I don't like Casberry eggs, so. I don't either. 2016 sales plummeted after Kraft changed the recipe from dairy okay. milk to a cheaper substitute. Ah. Uh. They were trying to save money, and they changed the recipe. That's what happened. I thought they were trying to move it out, but that's I got my things confused. So on to the main topic. On to the main topic. What is our main topic today, Jason? I wanted to talk about price shaming, but you had a different topic you wanted to talk about. 
Our favorite, other favorite movie? No, that or what? One. Which one? You had another price thing that you wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, it's the same. It goes hand in hand, I think, with uh, what you were talking about. And I kind of talked about this with the Ryan. Um, is scalping just? Uh, oh no, 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 never mind. This you want to talk about scalping? I wanted to talk about price shaming on Facebook. Right. They're both now. Now I'm remembering where you're going because you kind of I, I forgot about the topic that we wanted to talk about. But here's my what I kind of talked about this with the Ryan, and he was kind of like, ah, whatever. Uh, he's like, well, if you find something, but okay, here's, here's where I'm coming from, or here's my, my conundrum is, all right, you're at a flea market or you're anywhere and you find something that's worth thousands of dollars for dirt cheap. And then you go bragging about how you found this thing that's worth thousands of dollars for dirt cheap. And then when you go to sell it and then you try selling it and then people, it, it goes hand in hand with price shaming. But then people give you crap because you're selling this thing that for thousands of dollars that you found for under a hundred. Uh, and then everybody's like, it just, I don't know. It just kind of, to me, it just looks bad. I mean, I understand where he's coming from, but it just kind of looks bad when you're like, Oh, you know, you're bragging about finding this thing for that cheap. And then when you go to sell it, you're like, no, I want what it's worth. And, and because it, it had happened on a, one of the famous one of the websites, and somebody was giving him grief, and it just kind of blew up into a big thing. So I just yeah. I was, I was just curious your feelings, and it just to me it, it, I was just when I when I saw it came come up, I was just sort of like, huh. So I told told my wife, hey, you know, you may want to make a run at this because it was something she collects, and she was like, oh, we just spent a ton of money, and I don't want to spend any more money, and it went it, he he shut it down, but way over what I thought. Uh, he basically, he didn't accept any more offers on it and he'd shut it down way quick, way later than I thought it, it should have gone for, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just under the belief that if I get a good deal on something that I'm going to pass it on, I don't, I don't know. Or, you know, I'm going to make a decent amount of money, but I'm going to sell it for maybe half of what it's worth. I'm rambling right now, but it just no, seemed, I, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I, I, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel the same. I'm in the same boat there. First of all, there's no fix to this. It's going to happen. We live in a society where I hate saying that term, but yeah, we do where it's a capitalistic, you know, you work hard, you're supposed to work hard and, and get rewarded for that. You quote in this time and for the purpose of this conversation, working hard means going to 12 different targets on, in a two hours to see what they have. Mm -hmm. and you're supposed to turn that around for a profit. The other thing is it's just part of society today. That, um, Amazon has an app where you can go into the stores, scan it, see how much they sell it for, and then you can list that item on Amazon and make a profit. You go check out, and people do this with like candy and stuff. I've seen it for candy. You scan it, Walmart selling it for two fifty, Amazon selling it for seven fifty. So you just go up, you scan it with this iPhone scanner. You go purchase it and then you list it and Amazon will send you the, the label and you ship it out and you've wow. just made five bucks for yourself. So you, it's not necessarily just scalpers. Like if, if someone got lucky and they were just walking down the toy aisle and they see, you know, uh, the latest vintage collection figure and it's selling for twice the amount on Amazon, you know, that's just part of business now. Right. And, and that I don't hear. Okay. I don't have a problem with people doing that. What I have a problem with is that you're bragging about this awesome fine you had and how cheap you got it. And then you try to flip it. Yeah. That's a respect issue. That's what, that's so my you're not, issue. You're not respecting the community and you're not respecting your fellow collectors and you're leveraging people's need to collect these things, their love, their passion to make a buck. Right. And I think it's, a, it's just a, an ethical moral debate is that is that valid is that ethical right on one hand you know yeah we we live in a country that allows me to do that on the other hand it's disrespectful to the next person mm -hmm. treat others the way you expect them to treat you right that's the golden rule and it's not being applied in, in collecting because gotta make the bills y'all go <laughs> <laughs> make it rain <laughs> make it rain yeah and and it's also hey. a power trip thing. That's mm -hmm. you. You want that Boba Fett figure? Well, guess what? You gotta pay me thirty five dollars now. <laughs> I mean, it's just not. It's disrespectful, right? 
And I mean, I battle it with stuff that I sell too, but I'm not going to go. It, I don't know. It, it, I've also tried to pass on a good deal. And, and there are some times where you're like, oh, this thing's worth 500 bucks. I want 500 bucks for it or whatever. And it's, it's, it's the things that you don't, there's not really a market. There's not a set price for, you know, you could, you could look at, this is something you couldn't, uh, you know, there's not really a market for it. So you can't really say, okay, they're selling for this. And that's what they're going, you know, that's what I want yeah. for it. Cause it's, it, it was a, you know, prototype thing, but it, on the flip side, know. someone hears you passing along a good deal. They might, they might say, well, you're a chump. Yeah. You left money on the table. You're a chump. I've had that happen too. I've, I've seen that in a deal or no deal where people are, you know, they, for, you know, the, the thing that, that, that I like about the, the deal or no deal is, you know, you know, the person who's buying it and you can end it at any time. So if you know, like, okay, this guy's down the street for me, I may take a lower deal because I don't have to ship it. You know, that's the, the joy of deal or no deal, or I don't like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that with Jason. Um, but you know, or, or, and the bad part about it is you could be like, I don't like this guy. So, but I like this guy. So I'm going to take his deal. Um, yeah. Crap. I don't know where I was going with it, but it just. Yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't know if there's a, a fix for it. I don't know what's right or wrong because I could see both points of view. The thing that really just is a pet peeve of mine, you know, the, the vintage collection emperor is just hitting Walmart and, and targets a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I saw someone trying to sell it for 25, 35 bucks on one of the groups. Right. It's like you just got that from the store and you're now trying to flip it to the group. And, and those people, they, they get called out real fast on a group. Well, that. yeah. So is price shaming? Is that warranted? Is that is that should people price shame when you see that kind of crap happening? I, I think there's a right and wrong way to go about it. Uh, you know, that's at that point it depends on what group they're in. I mean, some of the rules, I mean, in our group, that's against the rules. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if you're trying to flip stuff for double, that's still out on the shelf. Cause uh, you know, we're trying to, to a helpful community versus a, 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 you know, a community where you're trying to make money off people. Uh, I mean, and, and like I said, it's a right way and a wrong way that, you know, you could PM the guy and be like, Hey man, that price is too much. Or it just, what I hate is when you're, you're trying to sell something and somebody's like, well, that's on Amazon for cheaper or the guy down the street, I can go down the street and get it for cheaper. And it's like, dude, don't do that. That, that to me is not cool. Uh, but if you're a scalper, you need to, to me, you need to kind of get called out. Uh, yeah. Or Especially hey, if, if things are just hitting shelves and you're throwing that stuff up for twice the amount that you bought it for. Right. You're just le like I said, you're leveraging someone else's passion to make a quick buck. You know they want that. You know they need that because it's got numbers on the back and they got a hole in their collection. Or they might that the emperor might be their favorite figure. Right. And you took it off the shelf to put money in your pocket. You just don't care about your fellow collector. There seems to be like a uh the community seems to be struggling right now with morality and who's morally correct and who morally isn't right it, it kind of is um and i think it's just because it, the stuff's so i don't know i don't know if you've got people that don't have anything to do you know maybe they're still unemployed and, and getting that unemployment check and, and they can go store to store you know, it, I, don't know. I don't know i don't know what the what the deal i don't know what the deal is right now but it is, it does suck when you, uh, when you see somebody pick up a case of stuff, knowing that they're going to flip it. I mean, at the end of the day, I can only control what I do. And so I don't price shame. I might give an angry emoji, you know, if mm -hmm. I see the, the, the scalping, but that would be the extent of it. I'm not going to call someone out and I'm not going to buy from them. Right. You no, know, I'll wait a couple months until the market reaches the point where it's worth that so like right now with that rocket fire and boba fett you were talking about i've waited too long and so if i pay 300 dollars, that's the current market value of that figure and i need to to shell that out to get that right but if i see something on the shelf and i know somebody wants it i'm not going to charge them more i'm going to charge them exactly what i paid for 
Uh, many a times it's usually less than because I don't like to do, I hate math. So I'm not going to be like, <laughs> you owe me 1432. No, just give me 14 bucks. And we'll, we'll be good. Right. You know, so that's, that's the best that I can do. And I, I treat other people the way I would like to be treated. So if, if I'm looking for a vintage collection emperor, which I am, hopefully someone will find it and be like, here you go, Jason, I found this. It's the 12 bucks, the 13 bucks, however much it is at the stores mm-hmm. nowadays. And that's maybe that's um, idealistic and unrealistic in today today's uh, community, but that's what I do, and that's what I hope other people do for me. Right. I mean, that's a there's a a group here in Georgia, uh, like I, I, Georgia they're a face- Action Figure Collective. Right, and that's what they do. That's they'll post pictures all the time. I'm at this Target. And here's what I got. You know, and either they're walking out the door, and people can go fight for it, or if they're i've never had somebody say i want that you know and and purchase it through them that way but i have done it for the club and uh but yeah i mean i think that's how it should be done you know if if you're looking for something um but if you're in a situation like in one of the podcasts with with jordan you were talking about the gargoyles figure that was 100 percent markup at the toy show like what do you do in that situation obviously people weren't going to buy it Right. So the market's going to tell him you over you overpaid it, and hopefully, you know he's not going to get that profit from it. But as a show showrunner, do you tell that person, "Hey, we're not we're not here to scalp people. Have fair market prices, maybe twenty percent bump, if that." Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, that was a a free show. So do, do you know does this yeah. Martin, the guy that runs it, does he go over and tell the guy, "Hey, you got to adjust your pricing," uh, or do you just you know? I don't know. I don't know how Martin, I know at, at one point Martin did want, you know, did kind of vet the people that were doing it, but now I just think he's got so many people that, yeah. you know, I don't know if it's a show up or you got to message him anymore. You know, I don't know. I know at one point you did, but, um, but I, I, I don't want to tell someone how to do their, right. Their, their, sh- their show. I just, I would worry that soon that show might be known for scalpers. So don't go there anymore. Yeah, it might. That, that would worry me too, That's but a there's potential a threat. It, right. Thankfully, there's a good enough mix there that you don't have, you know, everybody scalping stuff. Uh, I mean, there are days where it does feel like Target threw up all over the place, but then there's, you know, you do have a couple of people that have have good stuff there. Uh, you know, as and as far as if you're running a show that, uh, you know, if you're running a con and people have to, you know, apply to be vendors, then you know, okay, this guy's a scalper or this guy's a pop guy and I don't, you know, one or two pop guys and I'm done. I don't want a whole... Uh, room full of pops because right. you know it'll do good for the pop collectors but it's not going to do good for everybody else uh you know then then you can run your show the way you want to run it and if you want to have a bunch of scalpers at your show that's on you um you know there's a and i'm hoping you know i'm hoping that the people that run shows that you got to apply for are taking that kind of stuff into into consideration and i think it's i think uh like you usually say vote with your dollar vote yep. with your wallet if you see a scalper um, selling 100% over the, the the retail market price, don't buy it, and they'll be the one that gets burned, not the person buying it. And I know that's difficult when you go to 12 different targets and you don't see anything on the store shelves because it's all been picked over. Then you go to one of these toy show toy shows and they're all out. You know, you, you see like 12 of them out on the on the table, and you're like, "What the hell? I guess I have to pay this price to." Uh, to pick up the piece well you you don't and don't right. do it don't reward them there that's not the only 12 figures in the country right and, and i've learned patience is a virtue uh, patience is a virtue in this in this hobby yeah and, and you'll either you'll either be rewarded or you'll get burned you don't want to wait too long like you did on that fet because now it's it's been out for 12 years or whatever and and the market uh fets a hot item it's always been a, there's the fed tax has been in crazy but now it's even more crazy because uh the release of the mandalorian and uh now the book of boba fett he's top of mind on everybody um so i mean if you're looking for something you you could wait a few months and it, it'll it'll happen uh yeah. you'll find that somebody will have a good deal somebody knows you're looking for it that's another thing about networking is you let people know hey i'm looking for this card and uh it'll happen Somebody will get it and be like, oh, this guy's wanting it. Jason's wanting this emperor. So I'll call him up and be like, hey, man, I got an extra emperor. You want it? 
and, and you know, maybe give it to you at a good deal, maybe a little bit of a, a you know, a little bit of a markup to where you can handle that. But right now I, I hate paying markup prices for stuff that's in a store. Yeah. I think we all do. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind paying like $5 up because, you know, yeah, you, you, you're having to do some legwork and he's saving me some legwork, but when it's above $5, that just, it irks me. It pisses me off when, when, you know, when you're paying like, what the, v, the VTC is, uh, TVC is a vintage, whatever vintage collection. I'll just say it is what 12 to $15 in the store. Yeah. Depending on the store. It's a little so, higher GameStop. Yeah. GameStop's like always $5 higher. Um, I mean, I could see paying $5 more for one, like paying 20 bucks for one if I really want it. But even at that point, I'm like, do I really want this? I mean, I've passed up some stuff that's been in the $15 range that I'm like, ah, it's cool, but I, you know, I should have bought it because uh, it was, it was one of the Ewoks and the guy was only wanting like 15 bucks for it at a shop at a store. I mean, at a, a show. So I know this is all modern collecting talk, but I'm thinking, so when you go to those shows and you see like new black series out, you're like, Oh God, this guy. But then you see like rows and rows of black series figures that have been out for a couple of years. Oh, okay. Let me see what's here. You know, like what is the time time period? Is it like six months after you cross that six month line? You know, it's not available on the store shelves anymore. The I, price I think, is what the, the market says it is. Is that? I, yeah. I think six months to a year. I mean, but are, you know, that's a long game, you know, are these people willing to, to sit on their product for six months to a year, you know, um, cause that's a lot of, it, it, it blows my mind when I see somebody pick up, you know, go into a store and pick up five to 10 black series figures. Cause you're at 20 to $25 a piece. Yeah. So you're at a 200 to $500, you know, you're spending anywhere from 200 or $500 on, on figures that, you know, you may end up sitting on, which I, I don't understand how, I mean, I guess if you're a business guy, you've got that kind of money and you can do whatever you want, you know, yeah. so you're playing the long game, but that's a lot of money to sit on. It's also not worth my time to make 10 extra bucks. Right. You know, like I, like what, it just doesn't seem worth it to me. It's not. I might charge 10 bucks and I'll, I'll make 10 bucks, but it's just like at the same time, it's only 10 bucks. We're not talking yeah. thousands and thousands of dollars here. We're talking ten, fifty dollars. It's it's not worth my time and energy to scalp. And I've thought no. about it. Like it might it's really easy to pick things up and be like, I'm just gonna take all of these right now and resell them. Right. But then you've got I mean, let's say you pick up five of them, you can make fifty dollars, but still. Then you got to go to a show. You got to find some, you know, you got to set up at a show and you got to have enough of them to, to make that $50 and you got to make that $50 over, you know, over a weekend or whatever, or yeah. make, you know, it's a long game thing. I guess at the end of the day, treat others the way you want to be treated. I mean, that's, that's the only way you can make sure that you're trying to, you, that's the only way you're going to make the community better and right. stronger. Yeah. Just have, go ahead. No, you go. I don't know. I don't either. I was going to agree with you. And then I was yes. just going to spew more hot air. <laughs> hey, so, go ahead. Did you have anything else? I, I don't know. I, I guess we just went in a big old circle, but I, yeah, you know, we're spinning wheels. There's no right answer. I think the only thing, like, the, like I was just saying, you, you just got to live with yourself and do unto others the way you, you would hope they would do to you, I guess, which right. it, I mean, someone's going to be, that's a sucker right there. Yeah. And you got to do your homework too. I mean, you got to know what's, what's the going rate for things and, and you got to be, you know, know what you're comfortable paying. Cause some people ain't going to care, you know, some people aren't going to care. They'll pay a hundred percent markup just to get the figure. Yeah. And if that's the way you want to spend your money, go for it. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but I can help. You know, I help you watch out for it, but if you want to pay 60 bucks for a $30 figure, go right ahead and, but I don't think it's wise. I don't either. I'm pulling up events for the club. Huh? I'm pulling up events. So the Calhoun Comic Con is today. You're, yeah. We're obviously not going to that because that's an hour <laughs> to get there. Um. Yeah. The next weekend, the 20, what is next? What's next Saturday? Since 23rd. 23rd is Legion Con in Smyrna. Our buddy Chris Hamer puts that show on. It's from noon to five. 
we'll have a uh, we'll be there or I'll be there. I'll have a uh, the Georgia clubs has a fan table, so I'll be manning that for a little bit. That's my uh, anniversary, so I'm not sure I can make it or not. I'll oh. let you know. What else we got? I know. Let me let me look it up. Yeah, You're, the winter social I, way up. December fourth. That's for the Georgia Alliance. We got the fall crawl. How many do we have spots left open for that I on the twentieth? Think so. I think we're pretty much closed off for the fall crawl. Okay. We got two meetups in two weeks. Yeah, that's gonna I, be fun though. I've been putting it off. I gotta address this room because I got more stuff than space. Dude. I'm- and so I got to figure out how to space things out. That was the thing at ICE. It was a funny story that was kind of repeated. Like having an event, having a meetup was, there was a gun to the people's head. And they're like, oh, I got to get this room into shape and put the display together in the next two months because I have 150 people coming over to my house. So it's yeah. really a motivator kind of quite like that. There, Yeah, there isn't a motivator like a, like a collection. I mean, a, a tour, a collection tour coming. Cause that's what I'm doing right now in mine. I'm, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, we've got a month to get all this stuff set up. And, uh, and you know, I'm trying to force, huh? No, go ahead. Yeah. And I'm trying to force my wife. I'm like, come on. You just, she got a play school Ewok set up. And I'm like, you gotta get it set up. I made room for you to do it. So come on. And she finally set it up over a couple of days ago, but okay. Yeah. I need to sit in here, probably spend a couple of hours just looking at things and cleaning it and making sure there's no trash and, I got a couple places where I can expand, but in order to do that, I have to take things away. Then I don't have, those are some of my favorite pieces. So I just don't know what to do. I mean, that was the one thing I love when you see somebody else's collection, because you see where your collection could go and you could, you know, see new ways of, of displaying it. Uh, And then you, you know, cause you see like 10 different ways of displaying stuff. You see it from, I don't want to say it um, more of a messy collection hap, you know, some of the stuff is put up real nice and the rest of the collection is just sort of, a, I found I have a space. So I'm gonna put a guy there. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got some that are just meticulous. No, I'm, uh, I'm messy. Yeah. I fall I'm kind of messy category. a little bit too, <laughs> which is fine. It's organized chaos at least. Yeah. It's I try just... to at least try to put stuff together. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. I have a grand plan. So hopefully by next spring, my room will be a little different. We're going to move my desk upstairs. We're going to move, we're going to redo our closet. So we're going to clear out space. And then where I'm sitting right now with this desk is going to be like a glass display. Nice. But I'll get there some point. Yeah. I've thought about that too. Cause where my, my desk is taking up like six or seven feet of valuable wall space, <laughs> but I have nowhere else to put it. And I right. want to put it in the, in the, the uh, other room because then it's like a little i'm sitting in like a dungeon very yeah. much more like a dungeon uh, it's like a hallway yeah pretty much because that's yeah. where i had it set up originally and then i moved it in here and i like it set up better in here but we've got a grand plan but it's going to be years to do it because everything has to get moved around and and we wanted to do like an office to where we could both have our computers in there and then if while we're recording my wife knows that we're recording just don't bother me or whatever yeah. uh or if you are, just be very quiet. Or introduce yourself while you walk in, you know? Yep. So I got to take care of that for the fall crawl on the winter social. Yeah. Got to figure all this out. Figure out where to put space. Yeah. It'll be a where good to time, make space man. and put stuff. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad we have the meetup because I was kind of itching. You know, you go through that withdrawal of being around a lot of Star Wars people, being a lot around a lot of people. And then it's like, man, I got this withdrawal. And, and, you know, thankfully we've got the meetup today. We got Hamer con or Legion con next weekend. And then we got the fall crawl in a couple of weeks. So it'll be, you know, I can wean myself off of the, the, uh, the adrenaline of, of being around everybody. We need to start focusing on the spring and looking for meetups then. Yep. And we got the that. March will be Toylanta, which we'll have a booth at. Yeah. Toylanta will be fun. Hopefully we get our, uh, uh, what's it called? The art auction going for that. That'll be cool. Yep. So I just wanted to announce those upcoming events because I know I don't, Facebook is just a mystery to me and trying to, trying to, trying to tell people what's going on on Facebook seems to be uh, uneventful or, or a waste of it, my time and energy. It really, cause I feel that way with, with band stuff and it's definitely, it's showing it's, 
its ugly head with the with the club because you can look at, at a post and we have what 800 members in the club and 300 people maybe seeing a post yeah so i don't know if they're just you know because even you've even mentioned it with our with our uh facebook page you know we've got 300 people that like us but a third of them listen to the show so I know I've gotten in the uh, the rut or the rut or the not the rut, but the the trap of, you know, you get you like you become friends with people so they don't like your stuff. Yeah. But then they'll just like your stuff and then put you on mute and they never see any posts, right. which is what I do. So you just end up with a bunch of, of uh, empty likes. Yeah, I know. I can kind of figure a couple family members put me on mute for some reason. You know, <laughs> you never you never see them liking your posts. Right that doesn't really matter it's just it's kind of funny yeah but, but it is it's you know, frustrating like, yeah well you were just you mentioned something like and you'll see that the post saw 300 people but only like 20 of them liked it so did they yeah. really pay attention did they just to me scroll past it yeah did they sorry my dog was sniffing stuff but no, they just uh, scrolled past it and it became right. an impression what they call an impression so, I mean, I, that's why I, I'm, I'm kind of forcing the website because at least that way people can go one place and they have it all. Yep. And Facebook knows if you don't like something, we're not going to waste our time and show it to you because there's no value for you to see it. And chances are you're probably going to ditch Facebook and go somewhere else. And we want to keep you on here. Right. Well, that's just like algorithms work. Right. Well, even the algorithms like that in the Facebook group. So if somebody goes to the Facebook group, they may... You know, you may have, unless it's pinned, you may not see a post because it's going to be way down at the bottom. And if you don't get to the bottom, you're never going to see it. Another thing about Facebook groups, enough with the singular seller Facebook groups. Like enough. We don't need 12,000 different toy seller Facebook groups. Right. It's becoming too much. And I have to decline them now. <laughs> I just can't be part of all of these. I just, it's just, it's. It's too, it's too many groups, man. I don't even know how many groups I'm a member of. And, and in my, I've noticed that in my feed, it's become all groups. I don't, I don't remember seeing like individual posts, you know, like <laughs> seeing like your post. I, I think I might have you on my favorites or whatever, but yeah, unless I've got somebody on my favorites, I don't see their posts. Yeah. I wish they would bring back the chronological timeline. Yeah. I mean, you could do, you could get it to most recent, but it's still not right. It's, it takes effort and it's not really the most recent. Right. It's, it's just whatever they want you to see. They have all the control. Yeah. And here we are arguing over something that's free. Yeah. <laughs> is it free though? I mean, we've given a, like, if you haven't done so, this is another PSA. I guess I'm full of PSAs today. If you haven't done so on Facebook, check your privacies and just give that a refresh because for work, there was somebody who was complaining about something and I just wanted to know more about this person. So I did a quick search and somehow they became an interest of mine oh, personally. Geez. And so Facebook was saying anything related to this lady show ads related to her somehow. So I had to go through and I just got rid of everything that I was in, quote interested in. Uh -huh. And that was one of them. So if you haven't done so in a while, just there's ways to look it up. New York Times had an article about how to um, remove all your, your your privacy settings or fix your privacy settings. So if you haven't done so in a while, I recommend you doing that at least every six months. Okay. Well, that may be why I'm, I'm seeing like really weird posts on my Instagram and stuff. But yeah. that might be why. Sorry, my dog just, well, I pulled her into my lap because she was hey, down Sabine. Here. You say hi. Row, row. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, man. I'll see you in what? Hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah, man. This is meet the up. Meet, meet up, up day. day. It's meet up day. All right, Jason. See you in an hour and a half. It's second chance in Marietta, Georgia. This is the way. This is the way. <laughs>